In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I would like to speak this morning about our thoughts, our imagination, controlling our mind. But I think I'm going to need the help of perhaps a couple of our young people. What do you think, Octavius? Can you help me out? How about Amos? Okay, I think we need a young lady. How about... Uh, Octavius' sister, how about her? Can you help me out? All right. What was the sermon about today? Anybody remember? What was I going to preach about? Go ahead, tell me. Our imagination, controlling our thoughts. Because in today's gospel, our Lord says to the young paralytic, we know what a paralytic is, right? You do? We don't, huh? Okay, some do, some don't. A paralytic is someone who can't move his muscles, usually his arms and, or his legs. We have paraplegic, usually that's someone who can't move their arms or they can't move their legs. A quadriplegic is someone who can't move their arms or their legs. And that would be a very terrible place to be, wouldn't it? Oh, wait a minute. What was the sermon about? Go ahead. Our imagination. Okay, so we don't want to get focused on the paralytic right now, do we? All right, so where were we? Ah, our Lord cures this paralytic, but before he cures him, he says to the paralytic, take courage, son, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes are thinking within themselves, who is this man, Jesus, who forgives sins? Only God can forgive sins, but Jesus is God. He knows their thoughts. And he says, why do you harbor hatred in your hearts? Why do you think these things? And of course, that's why I want to preach today about controlling our thoughts, right? Because our thoughts are important. And so I came across a wonderful story this morning in my children's book, Sunday Morning Storyland. It's about a father trying to teach this very lesson to his son. They lived, this father and son lived in a house, and behind the house in the back of their property ran a stream. And I don't know about you, but I really like streams. I like water. Water is fascinating. It's one of the four essential elements the ancients talked about. I think even Brother Pascal likes water. If you look in there, you see all those aquariums full of water. But water is essential to our life. Wait a minute. Octavius, what is my sermon going to be about? Our imagination. Water is not the topic, is it? No. All right. We got to get back to where we were going, right? We're talking about controlling our imagination and controlling our thoughts. And this story, the father says to his son, of course, they have this stream going back behind their house, which I think is really neat to have a stream behind your house. You ever seen a stream? I like to go near the streams because there's all kinds of things to see in a stream. There's rocks to overturn, and sometimes there's crayfish underneath them. You can find salamanders and worms, and you see birds coming. There's a lot of things in a stream. Streams are really fascinating. Wait a minute. Amos, can you help me out? What am I supposed to be preaching about? Our imagination. Okay. Let's see. There was a story with that. Oh, yes. The father says to his son, you see the stream going behind our property there? I want you to take this bag of garbage, and I want you to go dump this bag of garbage out there where the stream begins on our property. And the little boy thought, that's pretty strange. But he did as his father told him to do. He took the garbage to the beginning of the stream where it first came into their property, and he dumps this bag of garbage. You know, the plastics and all kinds of paper and everything they threw out. He dumps it in the stream. And then his father says, I want you to come, and I want you to sit by the stream all day today and watch what happens. And so... The young boy sat, sat there by the stream all day, and he watched. And you know what happened? This garbage started coming down the river. It didn't come down all at once because some of it got 
stuck on a stick or a rock. It doesn't come all at once, but a little bit floats down the stream from time to time. And sometimes the garbage goes underneath the water and you can't see it, but then it pops back up. And he watched, and it took all day for this bag of garbage. Finally, it all went down the stream. And of course, you know those plastics that scientists tell us today about those forever chemicals in those plastics. It's not a good idea to dump plastic in your water because it contaminates the water. It pollutes it. It's not good for people. It's not, oh, wait a minute. What were we talking about? Imagination. Thank you, Ruth. You've been very helpful. We're talking about our imagination. So the father tells the son to put all this garbage in, and he sees the garbage bubbling up and coming down, up and down. And when he thinks it's all gone, another one pops up to the surface. So the next day, the father tells the son, I want you to take this bucket of lilies. I've got all these lilies we picked. And take this bucket up there, and where you dumped the garbage in yesterday, Today, I want you to dump this bucket full of lilies. And so the little boy does as his father told him, and he comes back and he sits by the stream all day, and he watches to see what happens. You know what happens? All day long, he sees these lilies floating down the stream. Some of them get stuck by a rock, and but later on they're pushed free. Some are stuck by a branch or a limb. Some of them sink down, but eventually they pop back up. But the lilies are pretty to see, and he's having a good time. This looks so much better than the garbage floating down the stream. I like to see the lilies floating and popping up and coming up in in the water from time to time. But this isn't about water. This sermon's not about garbage. It's not about lilies. What was it about? Imagination. imagination. <laughs> exactly, and controlling our imagination. So the father calls his son and he says, OK, now remember what you saw in the stream. Whatever you put into the stream at the top, it doesn't go away, does it? It flows down the stream. He says, your mind, your imagination is like that stream. Whatever you put into your imagination when you're little, it's going to be there for the rest of your life. Oh, it may sink underneath the surface and you won't see it for a long time, but eventually it's going to pop back up to the surface. And probably when you most don't want it, when you don't really like it. If you put bad thoughts in, there, in your mind when you're little, they're going to be popping up in your life all your life long. And you'll say, but I don't want those, th those thoughts. I don't want that in my imagination. It's too late. It's already there. They're going to keep popping back up just like the garbage. So, but if you want to have a life that is pleasant, what you need to put is not garbage in the stream of your imagination, but you need to put lilies, beautiful flowers. And that way, when the beautiful flowers pop up in your imagination from time to time, you're not going to be sad, you're not going to be angry, but you'll say, oh, that is a pleasant thought. I like that thought. And often we look into our imagination and wonder, does anybody else think like this? I've always wondered that as a child because I've been very different from other people. And as you can see, my imagination can wander very far, so far that I can forget what I'm talking about, right? We can become easily distracted. What is the main purpose of your paper? I can remember hearing that and having that written at the top of my paper after I handed it in. What's the point? Every good paper needs to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You're just rambling on. I'm just writing down what the thoughts as they come to my mind. This is my imagination. 
There has to be a purpose to this. There has to be a point. Okay, it's something we need to work on. But we all have imaginations. We all have thoughts. And we all must learn to control them and to bring them back, even if we need little children to remind us. What are we talking about? Very good. Our imagination. And what we put in that imagination is going to stay there. And so I want to warn you, as this father warned his son, be careful what you put into your imagination. Be careful what you look at. You look at bad things, those bad things are going to come back into your imagination. Be careful who you listen to. If you listen to evil advice, that evil advice is going to come back in your imagination. If you look at, see, smell, taste, whatever it is you put into your imagination, if it's bad, it's going to be there. And you can't get rid of it now. It's already there. Oh, it may sink like the garbage or the lilies. It may sink, and you may not see it all the time, but it's still there, and it's going to pop back up. And so the idea is that we put good things in our imagination, good thoughts, not bad thoughts, not blasphemy, not evil, that we try to look at good things and not bad things. Turn your eyes away from the evil. Don't listen to the evil. Don't listen to that which you know is bad. It's like dumping garbage in your imagination. Your imagination is going to wander. But we need to be able to bring it back and control it. When you're in school, in the classroom, and you're trying to focus on what the teacher is saying, it's easy to be distracted and say, look, it might rain, it's kind of cloudy outside. I wonder what the squirrels are doing. Where do the squirrels go when it rains? Where do the little rabbits go? Do they just get all wet? Do they catch a cold when they get all wet? Don't they have a place to go and stay dry? And our imagination forgets about what the teacher's saying. (laughs) forgets about what we're supposed to be doing. We forget where we are, why we're there, because our imagination can carry us away. But I think if our imagination carries us away to some place that is beautiful, that is much better than if our imagination carries us away to some place that is evil. Where is that beautiful place? that we should want our imagination to go from time to time. If it has to go somewhere and do something, if we need a distraction, where should we want our imagination to go? Well, I think the best place is heaven. You want your imagination, your distractions to lead you to a happy place. There's no happier place than heaven. How can I make my imagination do this? How can I direct my thoughts constantly to heaven? I say, well, you have to take that bucket of all those beautiful thoughts of heaven and dump them into the river of your imagination. You have to spend some time imagining what is heaven like? What will I see in heaven? Who will be there in heaven? What will it smell like? What will it sound like? And you can put all these pictures, all these thoughts into your imagination. And if you do it enough times, the rest of your life, those thoughts of heaven will come up in your imagination. And when the devil comes to tempt you, you'll want that thought of heaven rising up, bubbling to the surface. No, I will not listen to this devil, to this temptation, but I'm going to take my imagination to heaven. And one of the 
biggest difficulty with young people, not just young people, but especially for young people, is controlling our thoughts, controlling our imagination, especially bad thoughts, evil thoughts. How do I get rid of these bad thoughts? They won't leave me alone. They just keep coming. And I generally advise them, think of something else. Do something else. Go out, sweep the floor, rake the leaves, whatever. Dust, clean, move, do something. And they say, but wouldn't it be better if I got on my knees and prayed and asked God to take this thought away from me? Not really. You can do that later, but when you're suffering the temptation, that's not the best strategy. You know what the best strategy is, Octavius? No? Okay, well, pay attention. Are you paying attention? Controlling your imagination? You're focused on what we're supposed to be thinking about today? Or at least what I'm supposed to be preaching on today? All right. What you need to do is redirect your imagination. But you need something good in your imagination to go to, not the bad things, because the bad things are just going to be worse. And the more you think of it, the more it's going to be in your mind, the stronger you make it. And I have a wonderful example that they like to use in psychology when we talk to new students to tell you about negative reinforcement. It's a big, complicated, fancy word, isn't it? But I'm going to give you an example. Are you following me, Amos? Okay, pay attention now. I don't want you to imagine or think about a pink elephant. Don't think about the pink elephant. Maybe you need to pray to God, don't let me think about the pink elephant. I don't want you to think about how big a pink elephant might be. I don't want you to think about whether he was painted pink or there's a genetic modification and that it just turns out he was born pink. I don't want you to think whether he has pink polka dots or whether he's pink with gray polka dots or black, purple, purple, whatever polka dots. I don't want you to think about this elephant, what, he, what shade of color it is, how big he is. Don't think about the pink polka dot elephant. Are you following me? All right. What did you have in your imagination all the time I told you, don't think of the pink elephant? Were you thinking about a pink elephant? Even though I was telling you not to? All right. Because, just because I said don't do it, that didn't stop you, did it? And the more I said pink elephant, the worse it got, wasn't it? I can't forget about the pink elephant now because you keep saying pink elephant. It's the same if I start praying to God, take away this bad thought, take away this bad thought. Which bad thought? You know, this one I'm thinking. Stop thinking it. I don't want to think it. Well, the more you say that in your prayers, the worse it's going to get. How do I fight that? By doing something else. Go outside, go for a walk, climb a tree. Go down by the stream and think about all the things in the water. Look at all the animals. <laughs> think about water and how beautiful, what a wonderful gift it is from God. There are endless possibilities for our imagination to distract us. But we need to get away and turn our thoughts to something else. And if we have something in our imagination to fall back on, rather than thinking this bad thought, this evil thought, I can think of heaven. I can see God weeping over me because I have this bad thought. I can see my guardian angel coming to help me. Let's leave this place. Let's get out of this place in your head and go somewhere else. If I can imagine my guardian angel saying, come with me. Let's go to some other place in your mind, some other place in your imagination, some other place in your heart. If I can fall back on that, I have help. 
but I needed to put those thoughts in my imagination first. I have to first put the picture of my guardian angel, my patron saints of Jesus in my imagination to think of it. I know as little children, the rosary is pretty boring. Over and over again, this Hail Mary but it's boring because we haven't yet put anything in our imagination. If we will focus on what the mystery is that we're saying, imagine what it was like. You take the first joyful mystery. Do you know what the first joyful mystery is, Octavius? Amos? No one? Excellent. It's the little girls who know all the answers, aren't they? The Annunciation. That happens to be one of my favorite mysteries because I like to imagine the Blessed Mother there and the guardian angel, or angel Gabriel, excuse me, the angel Gabriel appearing to her. And in my imagination, I ask myself, was she scared when the angel Gabriel appeared? Was she really frightened? Was she calm? Was she relaxed? Was it like seeing her mother come into the room? Oh, hello, Angel Gabriel. Or was she, uh uh-oh, an angel has appeared. Where did he come from? What does he want? I like to think of what he said to her. And those words are the very words we use in the Hail Mary. The angel Gabriel says, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Wow. And if I just think of those simple words, there is so much for me to think about. Mary is full of grace. She is immaculate. She was conceived without sin. My imagination has an exhaustless supply. And even while I meditate on the other mysteries of the rosary, you know where my thought keeps going back? Because we keep saying it over and over again. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. These are the words of God that the angel spoke. But in that Annunciation, there's another one of my favorite things. Mary's fiat. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. This absolute conformity of Mary with God, with the angels. And this is what we should have. And so you wonder why I lose my place in the rosary sometimes? It's because my imagination is going wild. (laughs) Sometimes my imagination thinks about, oh, I have to do this, and oh, tomorrow I've got to do that. I have work to do. I've got computer work to do. I've got yard work I need to do. I have to prepare before winter comes. And all these thoughts keep coming into my imagination and distracting me. And Oh, I have to use the same technique that you do and say, wait a minute. I can think about those things later. Right now, I need to direct my thoughts to the rosary, to my prayer. What am I praying? What do these words mean? Who am I praying for? What am I asking God to do for me? What am I asking the Blessed Mother? Who am I praying to? Why am I praying? And then I can gradually bring all my thoughts back together and put them where they belong. Does that mean that I'm not going to be distracted again? Nope. (laughs) But each time I'm distracted, I have to say, wait a minute, I want these thoughts, not those thoughts. So don't become upset if you can't control your imagination right away. But I want you to be able to say, I have other things in my imagination. It's a vast toolbox, many things to think about, many things to imagine. 
and I can control them. I can control what I put into my imagination. I am in control of what I can pull up from my imagination. And yes, sometimes the devil attacks me and suggestions are there and somebody keeps talking about pink elephants and I can't stop thinking about pink elephants anymore. But I can take control and not repeat, I'm not going to think of pink elephants, I'm not going to think of pink elephants. That's not the answer. What am I going to think about? I'm going to think about Jesus on the cross. What was it like beneath the cross? Or I'm going to think about the Blessed Mother at the Annunciation, or the Visitation, or the Nativity, or the Presentation, or the Finding in the Temple. I can put my imagination to all of these things because I've already put the pictures there. I've dumped this bucket into my imagination a long time ago. And now as they resurface in the stream going through my mind, I can gather them up one by one when I need them. They are always there. And so when the devil keeps frustrating us, turn away from the devil and think of something else. Think of something good. Think of heaven. And little by little, we become masters of our own imagination. Benedictio Dei Omnipotentis, Papas, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti, descended super vos, et maniat semper. Amen. Thank you, children, for your help.